Hi, this is Graham Helfrich, Technical Advisor Manager for the Engineering Software here at IHS Market. Welcome to the weekly Did You Know episode where we learn how to do something of value that you probably didn't know about your IHS Market engineering software. Today we're going to learn how we can use flowback or clean up data in our RTA history match. And one thing I want to mention is this technique is quite experimental, meaning it's an idea uh, how you can use the Harmony software to better history match your initial water production, but we don't really have any great recommendations about some of the tuning options. This, it's brand new. So just think about this as an experiment. I'm going to show you how you can explore this option in Harmony. So what is the problem we're trying to solve here? Well, in the first months, of production data, sometimes it can be very difficult to history match the water production, even with a numerical multi-phase model. Part of the reason for this is that before we begin production, we hydraulically fracture the well, and that can increase the pressure around the well bore and fractures and also increase the water saturation. So what I'm going to show you is the technique you can use to basically set your numerical model up in Harmony to have these conditions before you begin production. And hopefully what that means is your history match can look more like this, where you're matching all three fluids, including the early water production. One thing I'll say too is flowback means different things to different people. For some people, it means very high frequency data in the first day of production. Uh, for other people it can mean the entire kind of cleanup period for many months after initial production. So I'm going to start with some synthetic cases to show you some of the sensitivities you can run and then we're going to finish with an actual history match to see how that looks. So I'm in Harmony Enterprise and I'm creating a production forecast from a horizontal multifrac oil well. It could be gas condensate or dry gas, whatever you want. I'm just picking an oil well right now. And to set up these models, I recommend going and checking out episode number eight of my series just to see how do you create a synthetic reservoir model without any production history. So I've got my lateral, I've got my fracs, I've got my enhanced permeability area here, and so on. So what I've done is I want to create a forecast considering water injection prior to production. And so the way we set that up is in our forecast tab, we can go down here and I've created two rows. So basically my first row is I'm actually scheduling this well to have water injected in it as a very first thing that happens. And I'm basically saying I'm going to inject 50,000 barrels of water per day, in this case over a period of one day. And then I'm going to turn the well on to production and operate it at a bottom of flowing pressure that begins at 8,000 PSI and gradually ramps down to 5,000 PSI over about 13 years. So you can change this unit to day or months. In this case, it's day. So again, so our, we're going to start with 50,000 barrels of water injection and then we're going to turn the well on production. So how long does this take to run a multi-phase numerical model? done. It just did a 14-year forecast. So let's have a closer look at what is happening here. So first thing I'm going to do is zoom in close to the frax here. We, if we want, we can turn on our grid cells. And what I can see here is this is my one day of water injection. So right now my pressure is equal everywhere. It's 8,500 pounds, which is the initial reservoir pressure. And as I go ahead, we notice here that the pressure is really starting to increase due to the water injection near the fracks. Okay, so we can start to see that our our pore pressure out here is still kind of native, and then our pressure near the completion is much higher due to that water injection. And then if we keep forecasting, we'll come on production and we'll get, you know, depletion. So that's looking at our pressure. The other thing we can do is look at our water saturation. So initially, 31% is just our natural water saturation, but as we start to inject that water, and we'll zoom in a little bit more, 
we can see how we're increasing the water saturation near the frac. So I'll just do that again. You go back, you go ahead at the end of the day of water injection. So this is kind of how we're basically setting the model up to start production with the increased pressure and sat water saturation around the frac. Okay, so that is kind of how you can control this when you're just doing a hypothetical scenario. Now I want to just cover uh, a trick to make this work in your software. To make this work we need to go to our editors and we need to play around with this geomechanical option. I think I'm going to put this on a log scale. Okay, so the reason we need to do this is when we inject at such a high rate, our numerical reservoir model, there's no way that it can absorb that amount of water based on how low the permeability is in the rock. In real life, and if you use a, a frac simulator, you're going to have breakdown and you're going to propagate a fracture by, by injecting water at that rate. But our numerical model, it's not a frac simulator, so it can't predict that breakdown happening. So we need some way to let the rock kind of give way and accept that incoming water. And the way we trick it is we adjust the geomechanical option or pressure dependent permeability. So what this does is as the pressure in the rock rises above the initial pressure due to the water injection, the permeability is increasing. And it's increasing to allow that water to be accepted into the rock. And so this is basically how we can inject water at a very high rate and let the model work by increasing the permeability as pressure increases. Now once we start production and depletion we're very quickly going to come back down to the original reservoir pressure and we can have just a, a constant pressure dependent permeability or some other correlation if you want. So uh, that's important to mention. The other thing that's important to mention is you have to input a higher than original reservoir pressure here and in this case I made it a very high number that basically is going to be the last point on this pressure dependent permeability curve. Um, this is just other this is just a way we need to make the software work. You'll see that back in the actual reservoir model itself the original pressure is true at 8500 pounds but in the editors this is just a trick that has to happen to work with this PDP curve so the water will be absorbed in the model. So that's just a trick that's going to be important if you want this to work. So what value can we get out of this? Well what I did was I wanted to inject at different injection volumes. So first we did 50,000 barrels per day and then I injected at 100,000 barrels per day and then at 200,000 barrels per day and I just wanted to understand things. I wanted to understand what is my water production, how is it different once I turn the well on, what, how does my oil rate change for these scenarios and what kind of water recovery factor can I ex expect with these different injection rates. So. Uh, as a result, we can see all these things very easily. So what I'm looking at here is the water production that I can expect back using this model when I turn it on. And what we're seeing is this is my cum water when I injected 50,000 barrels per day, when I injected 100,000 barrels a day, when I injected 200,000 barrels per day. This is the produced water we can expect. And then we can see that in a rate time as well. So this makes sense, obviously, more more water production with more water injected initially. Something else though is we can look at the oil production from these scenarios. So the cum oil in this case is predicted to be the lowest by injecting the lowest amount of water. Again that something that makes sense when we inject more water we're going to be getting more oil so this is we're just basically helping pressurize the reservoir more. Um, but these these rate oil rate curves are kind of interesting as well. Now another thing that was really interesting to investigate is the idea of soak time. So soak time is basically after you frack the well, you shut it in, you just stop, you just pause and let the pressure kind of distribute and equalize and then later you're, you'll turn the well on to production. So the way we can create that, we just add a row and we can say maybe we want to soak for 10 days and we're going to make the rate zero Okay, and now when we do this numerical prediction, now we're considering a period of a zero rate here for 10 days. And uh, what about 
one year of soak time. So these are things that I investigated and it's something that you can absolutely investigate as well. So here's a quick look at some of the results. So what I'm really looking at here is how much water do we recover considering different injection volumes and different soak times. So one thing that we can see is when we inject a lower amount of water, we get a higher percentage of that water back. In this case, when we inject a high amount of water, the amount of water that we get back is less in terms of a percentage. So that that's something that was kind of continuous through all of these studies. The thing that was interesting as well, though, is uh, what if we have no soak time? What if we have 10 days of soak time? What if we have one year of soak time? Uh, what the, this model was predicting for me is that with no soak time, I'm going to have a higher water recovery. And with a very long soak time, I'm going to have less water recovery. So uh, I think this is jiving with what we're seeing in real life. But again, this is just an experiment. There's a lot more work to go into this. And, you know, the pressure dependent permeability curve that I use is just a total guess. It's going to take some more tuning, but I wanted to show you how you can do these experiments. Uh, the next thing I would do, what I would encourage you to do, is this identical sort of study with oil recovery factor as well. So one of the results I want to show you is over in the comparison plot. So what we're looking at here is cumulative oil production versus time. And the colors are representing different amounts of soak time. So in green, this is our cumulative oil prediction with a long soak time, one year of soak time. Uh, and it's going to give us, in this case, the lowest oil production. In comparison, the red forecast is with no soak time, we're going to get the highest production forecast. So this is just an experiment. We need to do a lot of validating with this with real life. Uh, for example, you know, we're not considering the swelling that may be going on in the rock in real life. Uh, but I thought you would want to know that you can turn these wells from an injector to a producer just like I've shown you here. Now let's go check out an actual history match case to see how that works. Okay, so this is a real case. We have about two years of production history. And I see I have, a, I have an excellent history match with my pressure here. But we can see that the water match is nowhere close. And you could try playing with your relative permeability curves, but I don't think you're going to get a great match here. Instead, what we can do is consider including the water injection as part of the production history. So in this case, we, we put about 27,000 barrels of water in. and there's a few days of soak time here. So in this case, we have this in the, in the actual production editor. And if we go and look at the kind of production history, if we zoom in, we see this period of injection here before the production begins. So this is our injection here. So what impact does this have in the, in the history match? Well, we can see it right here. We get a much better history match for the oil, gas, and the water this time. And again, these history matches take very little time using the multi-phase numerical model in Harmony Enterprise. We can zoom in and see that when we go back to the very, very start, we have some higher uh, pressures here during that injection and higher water saturations, just like we are hoping for. OK. Now again, I'm just reminding you that the pressure dependent permeability is is set up in this way to kind of absorb or accept that water. And then I've just set the initial pressure to match my highest value on here. Now I want to give you a couple more resources if you're interested in uh, flow back or soaking and things like that. This is a 1SP paper here that you can go check out. And another resource is, is this presentation from Robert Hawks. And uh, I would uh, encourage you to look him up on LinkedIn, Robert Hawks. And you can uh, just send him a message and you can ask him to send this to you. So what does this really mean for you? Well, hopefully you're pretty impressed that you can kind of set the well up with the pressure and saturation of water around the fractures before you start your production. Um, it's really amazing how these fast numerical models have really come along. So for you, this means that you can actually start experimenting with the impact of soak time and looking at how much water recovery you may get for these different sensitivities. Uh, the other thing is, of course, this requires calibration. We need to validate these techniques 
that I've shown you here today, but at least there's a tool that we can do this and start to tune it to better characterize our well and predict our liquid forecasts. And that's it. I want to thank you for your time. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. And I will be uploading this Harmony file. I'll include a link in my LinkedIn post. It'll be there for about two weeks. And then afterwards, just give me an email or call, and I'll happily send you this exact Harmony file that I showed you here today so you can get started. Thank you.